and as I want to thank the organizers for the invitation to speak here. It's been a very nice conference and it's such a pleasure to be here. Um, so I want to talk about the Wittwecker von Grassmannian, so this all joint work with Balgav Butt. Um, and so I want to begin by recalling um, uh, some results about the classical, well, let's call this the classical, uh, von Grassmannian. So I guess I can take any base field, or actually I could take any base ring probably. Uh, let's do it over a field. Um, and then there's this thing called the affine Grassmannian. It's not an affine scheme. Uh, so let's define this as a functor on K algebras. So it well, so I guess for the moment, whenever I write a group, the group will be GLN, where n is some fixed integer. <coughs> and so it sends any r to uh, finite projective r power series t modules m, uh, which are some supposed to be lattices in uh, in this Laurent series module to the n, um, and that's the lattices, so you have to enforce it. After invert t, you get this whole module. Um, so, oh. <coughs> so, like the k value points are really just lattices in this uh, fixed vector space of the Laurent series. And so this is quite a big object, and so one can look at uh, subfunctors, say parameterized by some intervals, which parameterize those m, uh, which are squeezed in between t to the a, uh, r power series t to the n, uh, and t to the b. And then uh, this is really just the increasing union of these uh, subfunctors. And uh, what else do I want to say? Ah, so one can also write this F and Grassmannian as uh, a quotient of this loop group of G modulo the positive loop group of G, where LG is a functor which takes any R to the well G L well G is G L N. Um, are along series T value points of G and L plus G. Um, to the R power series T value points. So this equality is meant as FPQC sheaves. So it takes a quotient as FPQC sheaves. So concretely, this just means that you trivialize locally this. Uh, module M to R power series T to the N, and then the tr this matrix here is given by some element of LG, and then some, uh, you can forget about the trivialization of M. And so what kind of objects are those guys? This guy here is an infinite dimensional affine group scheme. So if say G N is one, then for for GM, you just have infinite power series such that the first coefficient is invertible. That's representable by GM times an infinite dimensional affine space, and this is some kind of uh, group in scheme. Of course, still infinite dimensional. <coughs> and so, uh, let me recall what uh, one knows about this Efron Grassmannian itself. Uh, maybe I should also give this first example. Uh, what do these gauges here look like? So if you're in the simplest case, 
if you look at interval 0, 1, uh, then if you look at k-value points, you're looking at lattices which are squeezed in between uh, k power series t to the n and t times k power series t to the n. And those <coughs> uh, submodules are in bijection with uh, sub-vector spaces of just the quotient. So it's really just a disjoint union uh, of classical Grassmannians of d-dimensional sub-vector spaces of a fixed n-dimensional vector space. Um, so that's a very nice space. But in general, these things will be more singular than that. So. Um, right, so the theorem of probably first by Beauvillain, proved by Beauvillain and Laszlo uh, is the following. So, all these truncated guys, they are uh, projective schemes of a K. And all the transition maps are uh, closed immersions. And so uh, this whole FN Grassmannian sum in scheme. Uh, what else do I want to say? Um, <coughs> So there is a natural ample line bundle on, on all these projective schemes, compatibly, and this line bundle is given by the following construction. So you can take this lattice and divide out by M, at least if you are in this uh, subset, uh, truncated subset there. So then this gadget here is some naturally finite projective R module. a small commutative algebra lemma. And then you can take the determinant of the finite projective R module and get some uh, line bundle uh, on whatever test string you have. So this defines uh, an ample line bundle um, And they are actually uh, uh, naturally compatible, so they're glued to a line bundle. Uh, on this whole guy. Um, but, so, I mean, the loop group that acts on this F and Grassmannian uh, by someone translating the lattice, but the slime model is actually not equivariant under this loop group action. So what happens is that uh, there is a natural central extension uh, of the loop group by GM such that uh, this L becomes equivariant in the discovery. And what else can I say? So actually also the uh, Picard group of this FN Grassmannian is just freely generated uh, by, by the class of L. Ah, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Let's say for if, at least for GSSLN. So then you just get the connected component. Uh.
So what happens is that uh, whenever you, with a sample extension, that whenever you act by an element of LG, the pull, pull back line bundle is isomorphic to L, but not canonically so. And so this GM factor is somewhat responsible for this generalization. And so, uh, representations uh, so if you look at the global sections of some power of L well, um, uh, well, there are representations of this group LG tilde um, uh, they play a very important role in in this classical theory, in this cuts moody representation theory. And the Valinde formula, stuff like that. And so, uh, at least in characteristic zero, there are reduce, reducible representations of this loop group. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm not an expert on this. But um, I mean, this whole story actually uh, works not just for GLN. Uh, so it works at least for a same as simple, simply connected, but even more generally. Uh, G. <coughs> and so uh, I guess those are particular results of faultings here. Um, and so uh, what's however confusing about the story is that uh, so so if you fix an embedding of G into GLN, then you get a map from this Grassmannian for G for the corresponding F and Grassmannian for G, so it's L G mod L plus G. It embeds uh, as a closed uh, subspace into this F and Grassmannian for GLN. And so you can pull back this line bundle. an ample line bundle. Uh, on this thing for general G. Um, and it's also still true that if you look at the Picard group of this F and Grassmannian for any G, that it's isomorphic to Z. Um, but you can't get a primitive element using this construction from GLN. So there's a phenomenon that for, say, an orthogonal group, for example, the slime model that you get by the natural embedding into GLN has a canonical square root, for example. And there's some kind of classical commutative algebra. But as I learned from faulting, if the group is E8, then this line model you get from the smallest, so the joint representation of E8, should have a canonical 60s root. And it's not so easy to construct. And so what, uh, how faulting constructed this is that uh, he constructed some natural divisors, uh, well, not quite on the, this FM Grassmannian, but on the FM flag variety. But it's what one call, sometimes calls anti Schubert cells, uh, which are related to the orbits under some uh, an opposite subgroup where you're allowing negative powers of T. Uh, 
And what I want to explain in the talk is how much of this picture one can uh, get if one replaces everywhere the power series by the width vectors. Um, and there are some very interesting twists to the situation, so now, uh, which so far I don't really understand. Um, so I guess in this case my base field uh, will now be a perfect field of positive characteristic p. Oh, by the way, can you hear me? I'm sort of forgetting that I should speak very loud. Um, so in this case, you can look at um, this width vector f and Grassmannian. Uh, so for the moment, again, probably I'm mostly thinking about GLN. Um, so let's define this as a function just on perfect k-algebras and two sets, uh, which sends any r to the set of finite projective wr modules, uh, m contained in the width vectors of r invert p to the n, such that again, if you invert p, you're getting uh, this whole thing. So you're parameterizing lattices inside a finite dimensional vector space over the width vectors of k invert p. And again, uh, you have these bounded subguys in here. Uh, <coughs> and the transition maps are closed immersions. So Transition maps are representable, relatively representable closed immersions. Yeah. Um, so let me make two remarks. Um, so the first is that uh, why why do I care? So uh, these kind of width vector from Grassmannian say one place they naturally occur is that they occur in the description of special fibers of Shimura varieties. Uh, through uh, what's known as f delin lustic varieties. Um, which are essentially these things that appeared in some Suku Shin's talk, and they're called xp phi in this langlands Rappaport conjecture. And well, actually, for a long time, they were only known as some kind of sets because there was no scheme structure on this uh, this fit vector f and Grassmannian. And another remark I wanted to make is why do I only take perfect algebras there? So we restrict to perfect algebras. As otherwise, the width vectors are not so well behaved. Oops. Well, you can't do two things at a time.
And so, uh, well, it's actually not completely clear to me whether one should really do this or whether there's something more clever that would see some finer type structure. So for example, uh, if you look at, uh, again, the smallest stratum, uh, then some of the same observations as in the other classical case show that this is just a disjoint union of classical Grassmannians, but actually somehow we have to take the perfections of these classical Grassmannians because we are only representing something on perfect rings. But on the other hand, there's like, you think that it really is canonically the perfection of this, and there should be some way to capture this, but I don't really know how. And also these FN, like what you see in the special fiber of Schmur, right, it also has a, like a finite type structure, and this, what I'm about to explain will only tell you about the perfection. All right, and so uh, what Xin Van Zhu had proved recently, last year or so, is that uh, actually all these truncated guys, they're representable by perfections of proper algebraic spaces. Over. Okay. Well, those are not canonical somehow, right? I mean, it's yeah, it's the perfection of something, but the something is only defined up to the purely inseparable maps, and, and there's no way to. We don't know any way of some of figuring out what the correct thing is. For, yeah. Um, Ah, maybe I should also say that, I should have said that before, that uh, you can still write this FN Grassmannian as a quotient of some LG mod L plus G, where these are similar essentially as before, where LG are if G split vectors with P in L plus G of R is G of the width vectors of R. And then these are some of this L plus G is as before some infinite dimensional affine group scheme, and the LG is some group group in scheme. Um, one might actually observe that for this you don't have to restrict to perfect rings. So it's like the Greenberg functor tells you that even if you look at this at all, on all rings, that's already representable by some. Uh, No, no, he didn't work. With, no, he restricted to perfect things also. Yeah. Um, so I should also say that there was a, this problem had been considered earlier, notably by in a paper of Harbusch, and uh, then in the thesis of Martin Kreidel. And so, for example, Martin Kreidel observed that. Uh, so he was <laughs> trying to understand such a quotient here on general rings. I mean, you can't like this make perfect sense on general rings, and you can take this quotient as FPQC sheaves, and then you can wonder what you get. And the answer seems to be that in general, it's hard to tell what you really get. But at least you observe that, that if you restrict this functor to perfect rings, then it's really this functor, so. And satisfies flat descent, so. I guess this here first in work of Cridal. Um Uh, yes. Um, and so the result that we proved in our paper says that actually the situation is slightly better, so really It's not just an algebraic space, it's a scheme. Well, perfection of a projective scheme over K. And the way we prove this 
is by first constructing what will turn out to be an ample line bundle on the space. So, uh, and what is this line bundle? Well, you can try to write down the same formula for it. Um, so you take phi to the a times the width vectors of r to the n and divide by the submodule. Uh, but the problem is that this, defined, this is not an R module. And so uh, it's not clear what it should really mean to take the determinant of it. But anyway, let's proceed for the moment. I'll say something about this. Um, this defines an ample line bundle And they, again, they glue to a line bundle on this whole Efren Grassmannian. And what else? So again, there is some there is some central extension, so, so there is a central extension. Um, some of FPQC sheaves on perfect rings. Such that this L becomes equivariant under AG. Such that L. All right. Um, so, for example, if you look at this on FP points, we get an extension. and QP to one. And <coughs> one can identify this with a push out of Steinberg's extension by K2 of QP. So at least whenever you have a so in a simple, simple connected group at this point, so maybe I should replace it by SLN, um, Steinberg showed that there is a universal algebraic <laughs> extension uh, by a central group, which is by K2 of this field, and, and you can push this out along what's maybe called the Hilbert symbol, the same Hilbert symbol, from K2 of QP to K1 of FP, which is just FP star. And so, hmm? uh, well, yeah, Matsumoto me. Yeah. Um, and so these kinds of coverings of periodic groups, they also somehow appear when you look at half integral rate modular forms or metaplectic groups or so. And they seem, somehow seem to be related to these central extensions that you see in this theory of loop groups. Um, 
So our proof uh, of the theorem that these are schemes is actually independent of Jew's previous work, so we prove it directly. And the key point is uh, the construction of the slime bundle L, uh, which was not really well defined up there. So, uh, So what's the idea uh, behind this? So that gadget there is not, not an R module, but you can still somehow filter it in such a way that all the associated gradients are R modules. So uh, for example, by the p-power filtration or so on it. And then you can try to first somehow, take the determinants of all the gradients and then tensor them together. So get something. So the idea is that you want to filter um, all this module you have there. in such a way uh, that uh, all graded Q, QI are finite projective R modules. And then define the determinant over R is this module uh, as a tensor product over all I of now things that do make sense. The idea, of course, being that whatever the determinant is, it's at least supposed to be to send short exact sequences of modules into tensor products. Um, well, this definition has two obvious issues. Uh, first of all, it's not clear that such a filtration even exists, and if it exists, it's probably not unique, and so the right-hand side is not a priori something independent of choices. So, so such a filtration exists in general only over a non-flat cover. So meaning, like if you want to construct a line bundle by, FPQ, by flat descent, it's enough to do this FPQC locally. But even FPQC locally, you can't in general find such filtration. And well, if it exists, it may or not be unique. So how do we take care of these issues? Let me first briefly explain what we do about two. So the idea for two is that we use k-series spaces. So that's key. Or spaces or spectra. Um, let me just briefly explain how this works. So, um, well, there's, there's a determinant map on the k-series spectrum of R going to, well, z-graded line bundles on R, uh, which intuitively it sends any module uh, to the determinant of M, which is some line bundle, and also the rank of M. Now, the issue being that if you have a, short ex well, if you have a direct sum of two modules, the determinant is a product. But if you swap the two factors, you somehow have to introduce a sign. And that's why I need to keep track of the rank. But anyway, so there's, so this somehow encodes uh, the determinant of finite projective R modules uh, 
uh, plus the fact that the determinant of m plus n is isomorphic to the determinant of m tends to the determinant of n. <coughs> All right, but unfortunately, some uh, the small you are interested in it doesn't define a point in this case series spectrum here. Uh, but there is, defined by Thomas and Trobo, uh, another case series spectrum called the case series spectrum of the width vectors on R on R. Um, and uh, a typical example of what this is built from would be. Uh, uh, such a module here. Um, so technically, it's built from perfect complexes of WR modules, which are a cyclic after you invert P. So it's some uh, recording information, which is some on the infinitism, some some, some neopotent thickening of R inside the width vectors. <coughs> and it comes with a natural map. Uh, uh, from the case theory of R, and uh, then we have the following theorem, which is a corollary of Quillen's so-called De Visage theorem, is that if R is the perfection of a regular of P-algebra, Then it's called MIP alpha. Then alpha is a homotopy equivalence, or weak homotopy equivalence. So intuitively, this means that someone exactly encodes information that whenever you have such a module, there is a way to filter it by finite projective R modules, and that in some sense this is. This choice of this filtration is unique up to some contractible space of choices, and so it doesn't really matter. And so, sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I write perfection of a regular. Yeah. I mean, first, if it's regular algebra, then something like this is okay if you take some smooth lift of this regular algebra here. Regular, in the I mean, smooth F algebra, say. You can reduce to smooth. I don't care. And then some of both of these commute with direct limits. So if you like take a direct limit over Fabinius, then you get there. And the completion doesn't change this thing. So. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, on here we have this determinant map, uh, which goes to well, z graded line bundles, um, and so uh, in this case where this is an equivalence, we can somewhat uh, invert this map and then get this determinant map here. So this, is if R is a perfection of a regular. All right, so, uh, so for regular F algebras, we have done it, but now we need to descend to the regular case. So, uh, right. Right, so we need to talk about uh, non-flat descent 
uh, for perfect schemes. I guess the first one to observe that there are very strong theorems here uh, was Ulfra Gubber. Um, So many theorems that would require flatness usually happen to be true for perfect schemes without any flatness hypotheses. Um, and so, oh, so fun fact, for example, is that uh, if you have some diagram like this, uh, these are perfect rings, perfect FP algebras. Uh, then all the tor i over a between b and c are zero for i bigger than zero. <coughs> uh, I'm not really going to use this, but it's somehow an instance of this weird behavior of perfect rings. Um, so let me define the kind of covers I want to do descent for. And uh, uh, these were in particular studied by David Reed. Um, a map f from x to y of say quasi-compact, quasi-separated uh, schemes is what I will want to call a V cover. Uh, and traditionally is called uh, universally subtrusive. Uh, so there was a notion of a submersive and then also of a universally submersive morphism, which someone says that it's a quotient map on topological spaces. Uh, and this is a slight uh, strengthening of this condition. And so somebody made up this word subtrusive for that. Um, and one way to phrase the condition is that for all variation rings, uh, spec V uh, mapping to Y, uh, there exists an extension of variation rings. and a diagram, so a lift of this map after this extension. So. Okay. Sorry, I guess I call this Y. This is called X, and we want an arrow here. Um, <coughs> a different way of saying this is that uh, so you can consider a scheme as a special kind of eddic space with underlying topological spaces, some of the space of equivalence classes of variations on this, on this scheme. And it's just saying that uh, on the topological spaces underlying these eddic spaces, this map is surjective. Oops. So that's a weird condition. So let me give a few examples. Um, uh, so first of all, if f is faithfully flat, uh, then f is a v-cover. Uh, for this, you first lift the most special points, uh, the most special point of the variation ring, and then you use that flat maps are generalizing. Uh, so it's more general than a flat cover. Um, on the other hand, you have 
proper surjective maps, then it's also a V cover. So in that case, you first lift the generic point of your variation ring, and then you use the variative criterion of properness to extend to the whole variation ring. Um, and so if F is finitely presented, and maybe because that's essentially the context in which Wojewodski worked, and Y is in Syrian, then F is a V cover if and only if F is an H cover in the sense of Wojewodski. And let me also give a non-example. Uh, so we can take for Y the F I'm plane over some field, and for X, uh, the blow up at the origin of Y uh, minus some point X, where this lies in the exceptional fiber. This lies over zero, zero. <coughs> then if you try to lift the variation ring in Y, which somehow goes from the generic point to zero, zero in the direction of this corresponding to this point you've removed, then you can't lift this to X. All right. And so, I mean, Boeing was proved by Gabriel, and then I think there's something new. Um, is that, well, at, like on, on general rings, um, and maybe I should have said, so for example, if you take the reduced sub scheme embedding into X, that's also a V cover. So if you work somewhere locally in this, in this topology, then you forget about all non reduced structure. And so you can't expect this to be a well be very well behaved uh, topology if you look at it on general schemes. But it turns out that if you do it on perfect schemes, then it's very well behaved. So the V topology. One technical term that uh, states is that it's subcanonical, i.e., representable pre sheaves are sheaves. Um, into X is a sheaf. And there are other properties that are nice. For example, uh, okay. I guess if I'm, let me ignore such theoretic issues. Um, so if I have some perfect ring, and I consider the cohomology of the structure sheaf in this topology, um, then actually it's as simple as it gets. So it's just R in degree zero and zero in positive degrees. And so this implies uh, the same kind of thing for a finite projective module. So if you find a projective R module, it gives you a sheaf. The global sections are again just uh, the module in degree zero and zero in positive degrees. But actually, you can also glue modules uh, uh, in this topology. So X goes to this the group order of vector bundles on X is a V-stack on perfect schemes.
right? Ah. Ah, I, in the middle of the talk, I thought it's, I'm on the two an hour schedule, but now I realize I'm on the quarter two schedule. So uh, I guess this means I can't say much about the proof, but uh, so it's formal to reduce to finitely presented covers. So you have such an H cover, and then there's an old argument which essentially goes back to Voivodsky, which says that if you want H descent, it's enough to have flat descent and a property for some abstract blob squares. And then these abstract blow-up squares you can just uh, analyze directly. Abstract blow-up squares, so that's uh, abstract blow-up squares. Blow-up. Uh, so it's like x to y, which is uh, proper surjective, and an isomorphism outside some z and y was pretty much e. Then one needs some property that, uh, so if you want to prove that some f is a sheaf, you need that, uh, so you can pull back a section on y to a section on x and a section on the closed subset. And like the obvious compatibility would want for these to come from y is that they agree on e. And actually, that's somehow what you have to prove that this is a, Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pullback diagram. And, well, it can be done. Um, but I wanted to use the rest of this talk to um, uh, discuss the case of general groups G because uh, So you're not so clear what happens there. So, so let's say again, G be uh, si same as simple. Uh, sorry, is that finishes the discussion of um, the, the construction of the line bundle? Because if you have if you have uh, this descent in this topology uh, for line bundles, then somehow it's enough to construct this locally in Z. But then by the Young's alterations, you have some of lots of proper maps from. Sorry. Um, how do we prove it's ample? Uh, so there's, there's a dimmer Z resolution uh, where you some of fix the filtration by finite projective R modules of this, of this P to the A, W, R to the N module is a module. And uh, that's, that's some kind of successive Grassmannian vibration, so that's a perfectly nice scheme. And you prove first proves that if you pull back the line bundle to this uh, the Mazur resolution, then there it's semi ample using some results of Kiel on semi ample line bundles and positive characteristic. And then if it's semi ample, you can look at the, uh, it's a Stein factorization. So it gives you some map to projective space. And the image of this map to projective space turns out to be the scheme you want to construct. Again, has this kind of LG mod L plus G. Um, uh, I don't know if you see she is. On perfect rings. And then, well, it's a corollary that this is also. Uh, because it admits this closed embedding into into uh, uh, the corresponding space for for GLN if you fix an embedding of G into GLN. Um, so again, one should have 
uh, that the Picard group of this gadget is so isomorphic to Z. Uh, but now again, it's hard to construct a primitive line bundle. So again, you can get some multiple of the line bundle by pulling back a line bundle from GLN. But yeah. uh, so I recall that faultings for this use the uh, uh, the orbits under some of the group, the k t inverse valued points of uh, of your group. So in this case, you would want to put something like yeah, I don't know what you want to put. So k invert p. So uh, this, this other group that's acting in the equal characteristic case just doesn't exist in the, in the mixed characteristic case. So there are not these natural divisors which would define these line bundles. And well, one has to be more, more clever, I guess. And so. Let me end with a couple of questions. So, yeah, how to obtain the primitive line bundle? Okay, so then. So you can look, at least for SLN or so, you can look at the re representation of this, uh, the central extension of the loop group on the global sections of some power of L. I do it for GLN, so say, for the moment, the second question is maybe only uh, for an SLN. Yeah, yeah, we can construct this, unit, this central extension, yes. And the action on the line bundle. So if you get this representation, yes. Well, so, uh, yeah, I mean, once you have this formalism of determinants for these kinds of uh, perfect complexes of WR modules, um, it's easy to get some. Uh, get definition of LG tilde and the action on the line bundle. Um, so, so this space is very big. So it's an inverse limit. I don't really know the co cycle that defines this extension. I mean maybe I don't wouldn't even really know how to, how to, how to try to write it down. Sorry, um, already over time. Um, so it's the inverse limit over the sections on these uh, truncated and truncated parts. Um, and classically, those are finite dimensional because they are like global sections of a line bundle on a projective scheme. But now, in our context, these are still already infinite dimensional because, for example, the sections on a perfect projective space of O of 1, there is this infinite direct sum uh, of i plus j equal 1, where i and j are in n invert p uh, of uh, x to the i times y to the j times k. And so, I don't know. I mean, you can pass to the topological dual of this guy, and then you get some kind of smooth representation if you look at FP points or so. Um, 
I have no idea what's the relevance of this. Uh, another question is whether one can actually construct any sections in there, any non-trivial sections, I mean, any explicit non-zero sections. Um, again, in the equal characteristic case, there are such sections, but again, they use some of this, 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 opposite, this opposite group, or, um, which doesn't exist. And maybe the last question is whether, uh, or is there some kind of finite type structure? Of some sort. And uh, the last one I want to mention is, I mean, is this representation star irreducible? Um, which is related to question four, because if you have a nice finite type structures, then you would expect uh, that probably all the structures are already defined on this finite type structure, which would give you a much smaller stable sub-representation here. But if this turns out to be irreducible, then probably says that there can't really be such a thing. Well, let me stop. <laughs>